Today we're going to be making muffins, but trust me, this is one recipe you won't be able to find in the kitchen cookbook. In this project, we're using backyard science and a bucket full of soda cans to make a batch of mini metal biscuits. Let's start this project with the mini metal foundry we made in another video in a big bag of charcoal briquettes. These might look like the kind for barbecuing and grilling, and that's because they are. When five briquettes are spaced evenly at the bottom, we're ready to add a crucible like this one I made out of a steel fire extinguisher, and I found that putting the container on a layer of charcoal helps melt the cans faster once we fire it up. Now let's connect a one-inch steel pipe through the air supply port on the side of the foundry. This will get the fire hot enough to melt metal, but we still need a way to shoot the air in. We could just blow through it, but a much better idea is to use a hair dryer, which you can find at most thrift stores for about $3. Now I taped the hairdryer to some PVC pipe and inserted a couple of 1 inch couplings to connect the steel tube at one end and give the blower tube a quick release feature. This way it's super easy to take apart and fits into a 5 gallon bucket for easy storage. Now since the blower tube is at a strategically placed angle, it's really helpful to support it so it doesn't strain the foundry. This little trick will help keep the walls from cracking and increase the life of the unit dramatically. Now that the foundry is all set up, let's fill it to the top with charcoal and breathe some life into them the same way you'd light up your barbecue. My tool of choice is a propane torch because it gets everything heated up in a hurry. The coals are burning, so let's flip the hairdryer to the low setting and blow a steady stream of oxygen on the charcoal to really heat things up. You can see how the cover we made keeps the heat inside so it conserves energy while it's bringing up the temperature. The coolest part is that the crucible lines up perfectly with the hole in the center. Alright, with that warming up, let's round up some soda cans, like these ones I got from a local recycling depot, and this important tool that makes the whole operation possible, a pair of steel tongs from the dollar store. After 10 minutes, you can see the foundry is scorching hot, and the handles probably are as well. So let's use the tongs to carefully remove the top without getting burned. You can see the steel crucible is glowing orange, and that means it's ready for action. The container is 3 inches wide, which is the perfect size for melting standard size soda cans like these. And at temperatures over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see it'll liquefy them in just a few seconds. Now I cranked it up to full power to melt more cans in a hurry, and averaged around 10 to 12 cans per minute. The cool thing is that it doesn't matter if the cans are dirty, painted, or still have soda inside. The furnace eats anything and pulls out pure liquid aluminum, which you'll see in just a second. In my experience, 38 to 45 cans produce around one pound of molten aluminum. And if you try crushing your cans first, you can melt them with the cover in place so less metal will get oxidized in the process. Now after liquefying about 50 cans, you can see the container is completely full, but there's a lot of gunk floating around that we really don't need. The easiest way to isolate the aluminum is with something like this steel cake pan I got at the thrift shop for 50 cents. First, let's go ahead and carefully remove the crucible, making sure we've got a very secure grip with our tongs. Then very slowly pour the liquid into the steel mold. You can see the slag stays behind and almost acts like a strainer, helping prevent anything solid from flowing downstream. Now that we've separated the good stuff out, why don't we tap the container on a slab of concrete and dump out the dross? By keeping our crucible clean, we can use it again right away. Now just for fun, I tried melting a bunch more cans so I could pour them into a brand new cupcake pan. The hope here is that this fancy pan will give a cool and unique look to the aluminum ingots when they cool. The pan is made of steel, but it's catching fire because the non-stick coating is burning off, but this will be the only time it does that. After a couple of minutes, you can see the ingots have hardened, but they're still blisteringly hot. So much so that they'll ignite a piece of paper instantly just by touching it. Now it's a really good idea to have a bucket of cold water nearby so you can cool them down. When they drop into cold water, you can see they're still hot enough to bring the water to an instant boil, but after about 10 seconds, they cool to the point where you could pick them up barehanded if you wanted to. Now I also tried pouring ingots into a mini muffin pan to get a smaller variety, and ended up with some really adorable mini metal muffins. These ones are actually my favorites now because they're so easy to work with. The purpose of an ingot is to keep some pure metal handy for when you want to make something cool. So now that we have some, all we have to do is fire up the foundry and toss a few nuggets into a clean crucible. This setup can liquefy ingots in 5 to 10 minutes, and check this out. By melting clean ingots, there isn't any dross we have to fish out either. Instead, there's only a thin skin of aluminum oxide, which means this entire crucible is full of molten aluminum ready for casting. I tried pouring mine into a 5 gallon bucket filled with sand and one other specialty item, which you can see bursts into flames and absorbs two full pounds of liquid metal. After five to 10 minutes, the metal is hard enough to grab onto with a pair of channel locks so we can break the mold and reveal the casting inside. 
watch for how to make something like this in another project video. When it's time to clean up, all the metal working tools fit conveniently into a 5 gallon bucket and when the foundry is cooled down, the handle makes it easy to flip over and dump out the ashes. Clean up is quick and when you replace your potted plant, you can see the whole thing reverts to its innocent disguise as fashionable home decor. Well now you know how to turn scrap aluminum soda cans into shiny metallic muffins, which you can simply admire with pride or use to make just about anything you want. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Behold the sword that was pulled from the sand. Hey guys, this was just a prototype for another project video I'm working on, but hundreds of you left comments asking me to give it away. So I will oblige and I'll give it as a gift to one of you. But before I explain the rules on how to win, we should really take a second to thank Audible.com for sponsoring this video. Audible has the world's largest selection of premium audiobooks. And in the spirit of melting metal and making swords, I want to recommend The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, which you can download for free by going to audible.com slash thekingofrandom and starting a 30-day free trial. If you don't want to get The Hobbit, they have over 150,000 other audiobooks you can choose from, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. And simply by checking out audible.com slash thekingofrandom, you're supporting me and my videos and allowing me to do more of them. Now back to the contest. I saw one comment suggesting that everyone should guess the weight of the sword and the one who gets closest to the actual weight wins. So that's how it's gonna work. Click here to submit your guess on how much the sword weighs in grams and in one week I'll check to see who got closest to the right answer then I'll ship it to the winner for free. Now don't put any answers in the comments. If you want a chance to win, click here and submit your best guess because that's the only place I'm gonna be choosing from. Thank you for supporting my videos and I hope to see you around for the next one. I'll talk to you then.